Hi folks, this is Mr. Woodward talking with you today about some problem solving strategies for physics using something called the guess method. I want to give you three examples of how to use the guess method to make physics problems a little bit easier to solve. Let's take a look at the first example together. It says, determine the acceleration of a car that increases its velocity from 35 meters per second to 92 meters per second over a period of 13 seconds. Well, the guess method has five steps. First, you're gonna determine what is given to you, which facts are given to you. Next, you're gonna identify what is specifically unknown in this problem that you're supposed to, to, to solve for or calculate. Third, you're going to identify the equation that's gonna guide your thinking. Fourth, you're gonna substitute your givens into your equation. And fifthly, you will solve for the final answer. So let's take a look at how these five steps apply to this particular problem. First, what is given in the problem? Well, this problem gives you a couple of velocities and a time, 35 meters per second, 92 meters per second, and 13 seconds. So we can identify those um, using these variables, V1, V2, and delta T. So the first Velocity is 35 meters per second. The second velocity is 92 meters per second. And the change in time is 13 seconds. Number two, what is unknown in this question? Well, the problem tells us to determine the acceleration. So it is the acceleration that is unknown. Thirdly, which equation is going to guide our thinking? Well, we need to look for an equation that relates velocity, time, and acceleration. And the equation that does that is the acceleration equation. It says that the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So if we substitute our givens into our equation, we would have that the acceleration is equal to 92 meters per second, which is the final velocity, minus 35 meters per second, which is the starting velocity, divided by the change in time of 13 seconds. Punching that into our calculator gives us a final acceleration of 4.4 meters per second per second, also called 4.4 meters per second squared. And that's it. That's the acceleration of the car. Let's take a look at an, another example. The second example says a cliff diver in Hawaii falls 2.4 seconds before splashing into the ocean below. Determine the height of the cliff. Note, you must ignore air resistance. So let's lay out our five steps of the guess method. First, what is given to us? Well, there is obviously a 2.4 seconds that's given to us, but there's something else that's not so obvious, and it is in the language. We see the word falls, a cliff diver in Hawaii falls. We also see the note at the end that says you must ignore air resistance. These are clues that the cliff diver is experiencing free fall due to Earth's gravity. And so what we need to know is that any object that is in free fall on Earth is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second per second. So that is the first thing that is actually given to us. And the second thing that's given to us is the time. So we'll lay those out. There's the acceleration, there's the time. Now what is unknown? The question asks us to determine the height of the cliff. So the height of the cliff is a distance. So we're going to call the unknown d. Well, the equation that relates our givens to our unknown is d equals one half at squared. Let's substitute our acceleration and our time into that equation, and we get d equals one half times 9.8 meters per second per second times 2.4 seconds squared. And don't forget to square the time. Plugging that into our calculator, the final distance, or the height of the cliff, is 28.2 meters. Let's do one more example of this. Sound travels through air at 343 meters per second. How much time would it take you to hear a thunderbolt 3,000 meters away? Well, first of all, there are two obvious givens. We see the numbers, 343 meters per second and 3,000 meters away. So we're going to call that a speed and a distance. What is unknown? The second sentence says how much time. So t, time, is our unknown. Thirdly, 
The equation that's going to relate all of these givens and unknowns together is the speed equation. Speed is distance divided by time, and we can flip that around to solve for time. Time is distance divided by speed. Substituting our givens into our equation, the time is 3,000 meters divided by 343 meters per second, which comes out to 8.75 seconds. I hope that this five-step guess method has been helpful to you and will help you solve problems in physics in the future. Thanks for watching.